Hey, this is Samantha here from RecipeThis.com and the voice behind the popular kitchen gadgets podcast, Magic with Gadgets. Today, I'm excited to share with you how to cook Ninja Foodie mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. Well, not as much as our eldest son does. He's going to be most excited of eating these and has taken them home for him. And it's great for a clear out when you've got loads of potatoes left over that you need to use up. I mean, I found this big container of potatoes that needed using up. And I thought to myself, right, get out the Ninja Foodie cooking pot and let's make some mash. Well, before we dive into this recipe, I just wanted to suggest that you head over to RecipeThis.com. We've got more than 1,200 kitchen gadget recipes, including recipes for the air fryer, instant pot, slow cooker, soup maker, bread maker, microwave, ninja foodie, and many others. We also have a free weekly newsletter, which you can find on the homepage of RecipeThis.com, or you can find it on RecipeThis.com forward slash newsletter, and there you can get our best kitchen gadget recipes sent to your inbox every Friday morning. So let's dive into uh, Ninja Foodie mashed potatoes. For ingredients, of course, loads and loads of spuds. I've also got for seasoning some salt and pepper and my favourite M&S herbs. So I've picked out some oregano and some parsley. Obviously mashed potatoes isn't the same without proper butter and then to make it nice and creamy Philadelphia cream cheese the light is fantastic for that and then the best ingredient of them all that I advise that you do not skip and that is proper vegetable stock. When you use proper vegetable stock it really does make your potatoes more flavoursome and what we do is we make our own veggie stock uh, if you go uh, and scroll through our YouTube videos or head on to Recipe This, you'll find a recipe there for Instant Pot Vegetable Stock. And we freeze these as cubes and then we just quickly defrosted this in the microwave and then it's ready to be loaded into the Ninja Foodie. So let's get started. I say the easiest thing to do, because you don't know how much potatoes you really want to peel, is um, to grab your Ninja Foodie cooking pot Put it to one side next to your potatoes and then as you peel and slice them you can be gradually adding them in and then you can see how much more you want to add and then a vegetable knife to my favorite but you may prefer to use your own peeler it's just totally up to you so then let's start peeling and the peeled i'm not going to bore you with a long long video of me peeling all those potatoes so there you have it, there's the potatoes peeled and yes, I used all of them out of my box. My box is now empty and ready for the next potatoes that we buy. And then you've got your potatoes all nice and make sure they're cubed enough so that they cook quick when they're pressure cooking in the Ninja Foodie. And then what you can do then is put them in, put the inner pot back in your ninja food or cooking pot depending on what you call it and then you want to grab your stock and load it in note your potatoes will be poking out the top it won't completely cover them and that is absolutely fine and then i add a bit of seasoning now and you can add more seasoning at the end as well a bit of salt bit of pepper and then we'll leave the herbs till the end and then it's ready for your pressure lid to go on and then you want to be setting um, the button so you were looking for the pressure cook one and you know I would normally do it between eight and ten minutes but I've got quite a lot of potatoes in there so I'm actually going to increase the time a little bit. So let's take it up to 15 minutes. And then once you've done that, make sure you set to ceiling on the top and then press start. And the Ninja Foodie beeps. That means that the uh, potatoes are finished pressure cooking. So now you need to press cancel on your pressure cooker. 
And then after this, you need to release the pressure. And like that, the pressure is finished releasing. And now it's time to take a look at those potatoes. Apologies for all the steam because there is a lot of steam and there is a lot of pressure to release. You know, I gave you the quick version of releasing the pressure, but trust me, it takes forever. You know, it's the kind of thing where you could make yourself a cup of tea, drink it and come back and the pressure's still releasing. So once you've done that, you know, and the steam's started to go, you'll notice that you've got some lovely, very soft potatoes that are ideal for mash. You could do a fork test just to see how tender they are. And I've purposely cooked them for much longer than I cook any other potatoes in the Ninja because then it makes making the mash even easier. So as you can see, I can literally fork the potatoes and they're almost turning into mash. They're that soft and that's exactly what you want. And then of course, you've still got some stock in the bottom that's added lovely f flavor to these potatoes because there's nothing worse than bland mash. And I thought, I thought as a kid, forgive me grandma, but your mash was bland. It was because the potatoes were boiled, there was a lack of seasoning added, and it wasn't the culture to make your own stock. Or it wasn't when you were doing something quick like mashed potatoes. But honestly, you do them in the Ninja like this and you will be able to taste the difference. So then, what I recommend you do is get your pot out and then move your ninja out the way. And then I can give you a closer look and the steam's starting to go a bit now. I say that and then as soon as you move it, the steam comes back. So as you can see, you can still see the stock in the bottom. And in this recipe, what we actually used was we used 800 mils of vegetable stock. Now a trick, if you actually reduce this to 300 mils of vegetable stock, you will not have any of the stock left in the bottom now. And instead, you can mash the potatoes directly in there without draining them. Uh, if you've not done this method before, check out my Instant Pot No Drain mashed potatoes for that. So then, once you've got them ready, you want to be draining them and then we can start mashing. And just like that, we have the potatoes drained and they're ready for making mashed potatoes with. So what I recommend you do next is add in your seasonings. I like a generous amount of parsley and oregano. And then of course, some salt and pepper. I cannot believe it, but I forgot to get some grated cheese. I nearly always put grated cheese in my mash, so I haven't got any with me, but if you've got some grated cheese, and throw some of that in as well. And let's not forget, everything tastes better with butter. So you want to add in some cubes of butter as well. And then of course, my favorite secret ingredient is some um, light Philadelphia. It makes your mash so much creamier and it's absolutely delicious. You just need a little bit of it. You don't need too much. Once you've done that, you're ready to mash. No, I do not recommend using one of these in your Ninja Foodie. You know, I would recommend a silicone one, but our Ninja Foodie is so battered and bruised, it really won't make any difference. And I don't have a silicone one at the moment. So if you are doing it at home, do use silicone if doing it direct in here. And then you just want to start the process of mashing your potatoes. And then as you can see, it's coming. And then, you can use some silicone to mix it with. What I love, I've had it forever, is uh, this silicone mixer. It came with my first ever Instant Pot. I think it's meant for when you're actually cooking rice in an Instant Pot, but it's just perfect for mixing with. And look at that, doesn't that mash look lovely? And I'll, I'll give you another look at it when it's cooled down and it's good enough for taste testing. So it's had time to cool down a bit. It's still a bit hot, but it's still okay if you're trying it. And that mash is just lovely. So creamy. If you haven't done so before, always uh, use some vegetable stock in making it and then use some Philadelphia cream cheese in it and it'll make it so much more creamy. 
or what I used to use years and years ago, which gives it a, a nice little kick, was to add a little bit of mayonnaise, and that is also lovely. So now you know how to cook ninja food in mashed potatoes, it's your turn to get your ninja out and try this at home. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Recipe This family. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. We also have a weekly newsletter at recipethis.com forward slash newsletter where we share with you our latest kitchen gadget recipes, what we're cooking in the Milner kitchen and so much more. As well as this, we recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then whenever we have a new video, you will be the first to know. And if you want to know about all our future videos, then I recommend you hit the bell for instant notifications. But even better, we now have a podcast. It's called Magic with Gadgets. Simply search Magic with Gadgets on your favourite podcast player and you'll find us there.